the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. And welcome to your distance learning session in geography. I am Changi Pepetua, your facilitator for the day. Before we get into the lesson of the day, let us correct the assignment we had in the last lesson. What was the assignment? The assignment is on a topographic map and on it, you are expected to identify a plateau, an escarpment, a ridge, and a broad valley. Now, this is a topographic map, the map extract of Cheddar. You are to identify an escarpment, a ridge, a broad valley, and a plateau. Now, remember in the last lesson, a number of signs were given to demonstrate how features are found on a topographic map using contours. That's how contours are aligned to represent specific landforms on the surface of the earth. Now, an escarpment. An escarpment, this is an escarpment here. If you look at the contours closely, Realize that at a certain point, look at the cursor. Here, the contours are close to each other. And as you move away from this area, you realize that the contours are spaced out, coming downwards, or moving towards where the cursor is. This is a broad, the broad valley. And then, this area is where the contours are close to each other. To say that the land around here is T. We are also asked to identify a plateau. A plateau is an area where the contours are close to each other, but the circular contour or the contour that closes up around that area is wide or is open. So you have closely packed contours and then a contour that is closing an open space contour that closes the closely packed contours. Then you have the broad valley. We also have a ridge. What is a ridge? It's an elongated landmass with mountain peaks and valleys. If you look at it closely, you see that there are some contours that are closed up. Then, so many, uh, this is one, this is another one closed up by an elongated contour that closes up with the smaller ones. Now let us see it on the sheet of paper. So you see, this is what I was saying. This is the broad valley. This is River Axe flowing in the low-lying areas, area that we showed on the map. Then, this is the escarpment. Remember I said an escarpment is an area, a steep slope facing a low-lying area. Then this is the plateau that we mentioned. On this other side, we also have an escarpment, no, a plateau, and an escarpment. So from the alignment of the contours, 
you can deduce the different landforms found on the topographic map. Our lesson 28 is titled Cross-Section Drawing and Gradient. In this lesson, we are going to have previous knowledge, learning objectives, real-life situation, learning activities, summary, exercises, and assignment. In our previous lesson, we had studied relief forms on topographic maps. Relief forms, that is landforms found on the topographic map. Now let us remind ourselves by answering these questions. What is relief? What is relief? Relief is the nature of the ground in terms of height, shape, and gradient. The nature of the land. Highlands, lowlands. The next question. Name some of the relief forms which can be identified on the topographic map. Some of the relief forms which can be found on the topographic map. We've already seen some in the assignment that we did. So let us remind ourselves. We have plateaus, escarpments, plains, conical hills, saddle, spur, knot, valleys, mountains. We can name them. There are as many as we can read and interpret on the topographic map. At the end of this lesson, learners should draw a cross-section of a topographic map, comment on the visibility between points along a cross-section, and calculate and interpret gradient. Let us begin our lesson by describing this situation in real life. Your village is enclaved. Its roads are in a bad state and its resources cannot be exploited. Your village is enclaved. Roads are bad. Resources are stopped and cannot be exploited. What is the problem? What do you think can be done to improve on the situation in your village? These are all questions that we have in mind. Let us follow the lesson to the end and come up with the answers to these questions or to these problems. The meaning of a cross section. A cross section is a line graph connected from contours across a given point showing the rise and fall of the land, showing the highlands and the lowlands. Now, how do we get about drawing a cross section? There are a number of steps to follow in order to draw a cross section. Remember, I said a cross section is a line graph showing the rise and fall of the land. Let us look at the steps. Step one identify the two points of the given area. Now, let us take an example of a topographic map. Remember we said topographic maps are identified by contour lines. Lines joining places of equal height above sea level. Now, step one, identify the two points of the given area. Now, you may be asked to draw a cross section between two points, point A and point B. between point A and point B. The next step, draw a straight line to link the two points. 
We draw a straight line to link points. That's point A and point B. Point A and point B. The next step. Place the straight edge of a paper or a glass paper along the line. Now, this is our paper. The edge of the paper. This is the edge of the paper. We will place the edge of the paper between the points A and B on the line that we have drawn. Now, this is our paper. Sorry, our paper cannot be the distance on the board. Look at this. Let us follow the procedure. On our paper, we mark point A and mark off point B on the line. The next step, mark the two points. I have marked the two points on my sheet of paper. Then, the next thing is to pick out the contours that cut across my line AB and write them on this my piece of paper. Now, let us pick the contours slowly. In a moment, you may, you may find the contours and you don't see. You have to lift up your paper so as to pick out the contour value. Now, this is point A. If I follow the contour line, I will see the contour value right down here. I write on this line 100 because that is contour 100 that cuts across the line. The next contour I mark, I mark the point and follow the contour line. This is contour 200. If I follow it closely, see, this is it here. I follow the contour line. I pick up the value and write on my sheet of paper. I do same for all the contour lines that have crossed my point A and I pick out the contour values. There's 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, then it's 800, then 900. On this other side, it goes back to 800, 700, right down to here, 300, which is the last point. Now, I have picked up the contour values on this sheet of paper, as you can see. Now, the next thing to do, see, this is where we are picking up the contour values that have crossed the line AB on your screen. Now, on your graph paper, make a horizontal line that is equivalent to the point A. Now, on my graph paper, let me assume that this is my graph paper. I will make a horizontal line that is equal to the distance between A and B. Now, let me make the horizontal line. I'm using my paper, but you need to use a ruler to draw. So you have to measure the distance between A and B to give you your horizontal line or your x axis. Now, when this has been done, you make a vertical line. The vertical line depends on this, the letter. Now, this is my vertical line and my horizontal line, which is equivalent to this line, AB. So, take your ruler, mark the point AB, and bring that exact point to form your horizontal line. Now, the next thing to do is to place the edge of your paper on the horizontal line. But before you do that, you must have a skill for the vertical line. The skill of the horizontal line 
he makes the scale of the map. Let us assume that the scale of the map is 1 in 50,000. What would be our vertical scale? No. The candidate or the learner chooses its vertical scale. Now, how do you choose your vertical scale? You choose your vertical scale depending on what? The contour values that you have picked. What is the highest contour value here? 900. And what is the lowest? 100. So, how do we choose a vertical scale? Let us say, for every one centimeter, the land rises by 50 meters. In that work, it depends on the learner. Now, I want to choose my vertical scale to be one centimeter equal to 100 meters. Why meters? Height is expressed in meters. That is why we are taking 100 meters. So, I come to my vertical scale, one centimeter, 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, 400, 7, 8, 9. Okay, now we have our vertical scale and our horizontal scale. Let us go back to the edge of the paper and place it. Please do not turn the paper. If you turn the paper this way, your cross section will be upside down. Right? Now, take the paper just as you placed on the line, maybe, and bring it to your horizontal line and start marking out the values. Now, my point A was 100. I put a dot. Point B, 200. I put a dot. I am moving. In faint lines, please, faint lines. No one should see, but you understand. The next is 300. I put a dot. The next is 400. I follow the point 400. I put a dot. The next quarter value is 500. I put a dot. 600. I put a dot. 700. I put. Just like that. Then the next one is 800. 700, 600, just like that. Features are coming down. Now, when that is done, see, place the edge of the paper along the horizontal line and, link and mark the contours to their corresponding height on our vertical scale or y axis. Now that we have put dots on the various points, the next thing to do is to connect or to link the point with our free hands. No ruler, as you can see on your screen. Now I want to link mine. I am linking the dots with a free hand. I have connected the points with the line, just like it is done on the board. Now, you may be also, you may be asked to insert certain features on your cross section. We already have our cross section. This is the shape of the land. The rise and fall of the land between point A and point B. Now, insert features. Maybe there's a road that passes somewhere around here. And you have been asked to insert the road. Take your paper, go back to the point A, B, and place on the point A, B, and mark out that portion where the road cuts the line A, B. Take the sharp edge of the paper and bring it back to your horizontal line and trace. And indicate. You are not going to draw the road, you are just going to indicate that there is a road. Yeah. There can be so many features asked. Use the same procedure to get to how to, put, to insert the features. Now, this is our cross section. Our vertical scale 
one centimeter equal to 100 meters. Our horizontal scale is now. In some occasions, you may be asked to check whether this point in are intervisible. Now, this is a cross section from what we had on the extra that we had. This is what has come out from there. See the cross section? There is a there's a river, there's a lake. Those are the features that we have inserted. And then this is the nature of the land. The land is falling, it's rising, showing the cross section, a line graph showing the rise and fall of the land. No. When you must have drawn your cross section, they may also ask you to state whether the two areas are intervisible or not. What is intervisibility? The possibility of seeing one point from the other. Now, let us take this. This is our cross section. This is point A and this is point B. Now, looking at what we have here, are these two points intervisible? Can the person standing at point A see the person at point B without any interfering feature? The answer is no. Because look at the height of this land and see where uh, B is. This is point A, B. Somebody standing at A. Can the person see the person at B? Can the person at B see the person at A? No. Because of what? The presence of this view. Now, in this other one, let us assume that this is our cross section. Point A, point B. Now, to determine intervisibility, connect the two points to the straight line. This is A and B. Are these two points intervisible? Just like what we have. We have drawn a cross section from point A to point B. And this is the shape of the line. This is point A and this is point B. We have connected point A to B with these broken lines. We realize that these two points are intervisible. Now, look at this one. Point A. There's point C and there is point B. Is point A intervisible with point B? Is point B, I mean point A, intervisible with point B? Yes. Point A is intervisible. You can see from the possibility of seeing each other is high. But point A to C is not intervisible. Visible. So, A and B are not intervisible. It becomes a dead ground. So, this is C. Alright. Now, let us take it again. This is point A and point C. Look at it closely. Are they intervisible? Yes, of course, they are. They are intervisible. Because you can see, look at the straight line from A to B, from A to C. But if it were here, look at where this arrow is. If somebody were at this point where the cursor is, they would not have been seeing each other. So that area becomes intervisible or a dead ground. When you must have calculated or you have drawn your cross section, we may ask you to calculate the vertical exaggeration. What is vertical exaggeration? The number of times the vertical scale has been made big or magnified compared with the horizontal scale. How do we calculate it? We get the vertical scale or vertical exaggeration is calculated using the formula 
horizontal scale, which is the scale of the map, 1 in 50,000, divided by the vertical scale, which is 1 centimeter equal to 100 meters, times 100. Why do we times it by 100? We want to convert centimeters, we want to convert meters to centimeters. And there are 100 centimeters in 1 meter. So if we use the formula, assume that you have drawn a cross section and your vertical scale is 1 centimeter to 100 meters and the horizontal scale is 1 in 50,000, then your vertical scale will be, see, this is your vertical, your vertical scale, this is the horizontal scale, 50,000. The horizontal, the vertical scale, 100,000 times 100. We express the answer in times. So, we have exaggerated our vertical scale in relation to the horizontal scale by five times. So, vertical exaggeration is expressed in times. We can also be asked to calculate the gradient of the slope or of a point. And what is the gradient of a slope or the gradient? Gradient means the steepness of the slope. How steep that slope is? Is it too steep or is it gentle? To get the gradient of a slope, we use this formula to calculate the gradient. Gradient of the slope, that's the height of both, not the height of two places. For example, this is the height here. The height here is about 300. And let us assume that the height at point B is 100. If the height at point A is 300 and that of point B is 100, we now know the height at both points. What do we do next? We find the difference between point A and B. Point A, height at point A is 300. Height at point B is 100. The difference, take away, is 0, 0, 2. Our vertical interval will be equal to 200, 200 meters. Now, the next thing to do is to calculate the straight line distance between the two points. How do we calculate the straight line distance? We measure the distance from point A to point B using our ruler, or if it is a winding distance, you can use any of the methods we have been taught to measure the distance. Assume that the distance between point A to point B is 6 centimeters. Distance between point A and B equal to 6 centimeters. Now, the distance, we will use the distance to get the horizontal equivalent. Now, how do we work out the gradient? We have already had the vertical interval. To get the horizontal equivalent, the distance here is calculated. How do we calculate distance? Remember the formula to calculate distance. Distance in centimeters times, let me just go straight to the point, times scale divided by 100,000. If we do that, here, yeah, assume that the scale of the map is 50,000. There's a short form. Since it is 50,000, you divide by 2. 1 here, 3. It no longer becomes centimeter. It becomes what? 3 kilometers. 3 kilometers. Now, the formula to calculate gradient is Vertical interval of our horizontal equivalent times 100,000. Why are we times it by 100,000? Uh, by 1,000, please. Because distance is expressed in kilometers. Height is expressed in meters. And to convert kilometers to meters, we multiply it by 1,000. To say that there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. Now, if that is the case, we have vertical interval equal to 200 meters divided by 
horizontal equivalent, which is 3 kilometers times 1,000. Now, 200 divided by 3,000. 3 near 2, 2, 0, 2 near 1, 2 near 15. So the slope is 1 in 15. Now, the result is expressed in 1 in x or in degrees. Or it is also expressed as a percentage. Now, if it is 1 in 15, it means the slope is gentle. But if, it is, if the volume is smaller, it means the slope is steep. Now, let us take this worked example. Calculate the gradient between point Y and X, separated by a distance of 6 centimeters, assuming the scale to 150,000. From our work example, we've already followed the steps, and we see that it is almost the same like what we have on the board or on your screen. Now, see what is done. Our only difference is in terms of what? The height between point A and the height between point B. The height between point a is 500 and that of B is 0. You look for the difference, look for the horizontal equivalent, and then you see the answer is there. You can also express it in degrees. It has been expressed here in degrees. Or it, has, it can also be expressed as a percentage. Now, when all of this is done, it means that on average, for every 6 meters Along the y and the x axis, there is a rise of one meter in height. So the smaller the denominator, the steeper the gradient. One in six is steeper than one in ten. Just like I said before, we have a slope. We have a gradient of one in fifteen to say that the slope is less steep than a slope that is one in. 5, 1 in 3, 1 in 2. So, that is how you judge whether the slope is steep or gentle. Summarily, a cross section is a line graph drawn between two points showing the rise and fall in the, in the height of the land. We've also seen the steps in drawing a cross section. We have also seen how intervisible two points can be after a cross-section has been drawn. We can also calculate the gradient of a slope from two points given. Now let us round up our lesson with this exercise. Define gradient, the steepness of the slope. The next question, state the formula used in the calculation of gradient of a slope. The formula is vertical interval, over horizontal equivalent, over horizontal equivalent is HD times 1000. HE, VI divided by VE times 1000. On the cross section below, using the letters A, B, C, D, identify the areas considered as dead ground from X. As dead ground, this is X. This is A, B, C. So which ones are dead ones? A, we draw a straight line to B. We draw a straight line from there to this. How intervisible are they? On the cross section, point B and C are dead ones from X. So to say that if you are at point B and point C, somebody at point X cannot see you and you cannot also see the person. Why are, they, why are they considered as dead grounds? Remember I said dead ground because they are hidden from view, they are hidden from each other. You cannot see. Now let us take this assignment so that when we meet in the next lesson, we would have the correction. Using the map below, draw a cross section from T to Z to S and state whether T and S are intervisible. Draw a cross section from T to S and state whether T and S are intervisible. That's the cross, that's the, the graph. 
draw the cross section and determine. Now, for the sake of reference, there are a number of documents you can consult. So, consult these documents 21st Century Applied Physical Geography and Map Work. We also have Illustrated Physical Geography and Map Reading for Cameroon, an introduction to map reading for West Africa. So, those are documents you can consult for further studies and to also do your assignment. We've come to the end of the lesson. See you in the next lesson in which we shall be describing relief. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana matege mot, ngani la kiri watege ndom, esa kina bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam